we treat animals can have global public health implications. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Hello, attentive viewers, and welcome to Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. On this episode of the Stop Animal Cruelty series, we feature Dr. Michael Greger, an American physician specializing in clinical nutrition who is a vegan, meaning he follows an animal-free diet. He's also an author and internationally recognized speaker on public health issues. Dr. Greger currently serves as the Director of Public Health and Animal Agriculture at the Humane Society of the United States a highly respected U.S. animal welfare organization. In his most recent book, Bird Flu, A Virus of Our Own Hatching, Dr. Greger discusses how consumption of animal products and the widespread inhumane practice of factory farming pose serious threats to global public health. One of Dr. Greger's chief concerns is the emergence of new forms of influenza viruses, which frequently originate from factory farmed animals who are made to live in utterly appalling conditions. The reason that we were so concerned about the emergence of this new bird flu virus, or in fact any new influenza virus, including the swine flu virus, is because the influenza virus has a track history. Influenza is a virus well known to humankind and in fact triggered the worst plague in human history. The flu pandemic of 1918, no war, no famine, no plague ever killed so many people in so short a time as the 1918 pandemic. Within just a few months, that pandemic killed over 50 million people. Anytime there's a new influenza virus, um, we're concerned because it's the only pathogen that we know of that can literally infect half of humanity within a matter of months. Uh, influenza can infect literally billions of people. How did the current swine flu virus, which has already affected hundreds of thousands of people, come about? Is it in any way related to the virus of 1918? The H1N1 virus that uh, caused the 1918 pandemic came from birds to people. And then at the same time, millions of pigs were getting sick. And now we know that we then gave that bird virus to pigs. And that H1N1 virus has circulated for 80 years without very much change. But then in the 1990s, something happened. Here in the States in 1998, a never before described emergence of a triple hybrid mutant virus, part bird flu virus, part pig virus, and part human virus emerged. By the end of 1998, it had appeared in Texas, Minnesota, and, uh, and Iowa, and by early 1999, it spread all across the country. And then it spread into Canada and to Mexico. And so this virus, this triple hybrid mutant, has been spreading and sickening millions of pigs um, for the last 10 years. And little did we know that all it needed to do is grab onto these last two gene segments from a Eurasian swine flu lineage of viruses to create a virus capable of human to human transmission. So this current swine flu threat really has its origins in 1918. Dr. Greger explains how the unimaginable living conditions of animals in these concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, contribute to the spread of disease. 
cramped, overcrowded, unhygienic, filthy conditions, confined by the billions around the world, not just millions. When we cram tens of thousands of animals into these cramped, filthy football field-sized sheds to lie beak to beak or snout to snout atop their own waist, it's just a breeding ground for disease. How can viruses spread and mutate on a factory farm? Swine flu spreads just like human flu through these contagious respiratory droplets. And you can imagine if you had you know, 5,000 people crammed together in one big elevator, how quickly a, a contagious respiratory disease would spread. Well, similarly, when you have five, 6,000 pigs confined in these gestation crates in a single shed, you can see how rapidly this virus could spread and the large infectious loads that transmit from one animal to another because they're packed snout to snout is another way that very rare mutants, virulent mutants or mutants that are more transmissible person to person, could um, get spread from one animal to another. This heartless and abusive treatment of animals causes the multiplication of respiratory diseases like the influenza virus. We don't provide them even that modicum of mercy to both their detriment and to us. The ammonia from the decomposing excrement burns their lungs, leading to predisposing them to respiratory infection in the first place. The unacceptable failure to provide any natural sunlight to the gentle beings further encourages virus survival and reproduction. The UV rays and sunlight are actually quite effective in destroying the influenza virus. But when we have um, animals that are confined their entire lives without ever seeing sunlight, these viruses can exist for literally years in these kind of conditions. The dankness helps keep the virus alive. But it is not only the inhumane confinement of these intensively raised animals that fosters the development of viruses. When we return, we will learn about several other factors which contribute to the transmission of disease on these horrific factory farms. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television. Dr. Michael Greger is a vegan who is a physician, author, and the director of public health and animal agriculture at the Humane Society of the United States. He is speaking with us today about the public health threat that dangerous factory farms pose to us all in terms of how they facilitate the transmission of viruses such as the swine flu virus. Now, Dr. Greger explains why the immune system of an animal cruelly raised under the crowded and squalid conditions of a concentrated animal feeding operation is severely compromised. the stress crippling their immune systems. There's science that shows that even simple measures like providing straw to these animals, just so they don't have the immune crippling effect of, of the stress of lying on bare concrete their, their whole lives, can significantly decrease swine influenza transmission rates. What is the end result of unconsciously raising billions of animals under crammed, traumatic conditions with insufficient fresh air and no sunlight. And you put all these factors together, you have this perfect storm environment for the emergence, existence, and spread of these highly pathogenic viruses, which is of course very concerning for us, the human population. The swine flu, or H1N1, 
has infected hundreds of thousands of people. The World Health Organization states that over 1,800 have perished thus far from the virus. However, Dr. Greger warns that the virus could follow a pattern similar to that of the 1918 pandemic. There are, are certainly concerns anytime there's a new influenza virus. In 1918, uh, there was a very mild wave, as we may be experiencing now, which started in March, April, May of 1918, and then essentially disappeared, but came back in late August to strike dead 50 to 100 million people around the world. And so is that same thing going to happen with swine flu? We have no way of telling. If it's not this swine flu, it could still be the bird flu or a number of these other very serious animal flu viruses that have recently emerged thanks in part to the way we now can find billions of animals around the globe. Antibiotic use on pigs, chickens, cows, etc. is rampant on factory farms in order to keep the gentle beings alive in their foul and disgusting surroundings until slaughter. According to the esteemed United States nonprofit organization, the Union of Concerned Scientists, 70% of antibiotics used in the U.S. are given to factory farm animals. This abusive practice has implications for humans as well. As a physician, we are running out of good antibiotic options, and the majority of antibiotics used in the United States goes not to treat sick people, but goes to farm animals just to promote growth and prevent disease in such a stressful and unhygienic environment. Dr. Greger confirms that many American health professionals have recognized the peril these intensive animal raising operations pose to humankind. Back in 2003, the American Public Health Association called for a moratorium on these so-called factory farms. So the oldest and largest association of public health professionals in the world over five years ago said no more factory farms. In 2005, the United Nations released a press release saying that these factory farms provide what they call ideal conditions for the virus to mutate into a more dangerous form. These industrial confinement facilities, these factory farms or CAFOs, uh, can be thought of as original incubators for dangerous strains of animal flu viruses. And just last year in 2008, the Pew Commission on Industrial Farm Animal Production, which included a former U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, concluded that these factory farms pose unacceptable public health risks. How do we minimize our chances of contracting these viruses? You only get the flu if you come in contact with someone who's sick or right before they become sick. And so by isolating oneself in one's home, one can you know, not get infected. And of course, there's other measures such as respiratory hygiene, not coughing in one's hand, because then one enslimes their hand with virus, which can then um, transfer to a doorknob or a light switch handle or gas pump handle, and then infect someone else, touching that doorknob and then touching their face, their eyes, nose, and mouth before first washing their hands. So hand hygiene, very important as well, either washing one's hands after touching a public surface or shaking someone's hands before touching one's face, or using one of these alcohol-based hand sanitizers, very effective in destroying any influenza viruses. Many thanks to Dr. Michael Greger for his tireless and dedicated research on the relationship between concentrated animal feeding operations and pandemic influenza viruses. May all such operations be halted immediately to end the horrendous cruelty to our animal friends and may humankind adopt the compassionate organic vegan diet so that all beings on our planet can live in health, happiness, and peace. Please join us again next Tuesday on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants for part two of our interview with Dr. Michael Greger on how factory farms spread viruses. Enlightening Entertainment is next after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May heaven's grace be upon our planet. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.